This week on Kentucky Field. So you guys are in control of the firearm at all times. Safety's the number one thing over here. We are tagging along with conservation officers, but they're not looking to write any tickets. Just hoping to show a group of youth hunters a special weekend in the field. Next, we're back in the deer stand and doing everything we can to get a nice buck in range. <laughs> then, we'll show you how to turn one of your deer tags into meals for those in need. 400,000 meals. Right, that's my goal for this year. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> Where's St. Leo? Yeah. Here it goes! Boom! Oh, wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Many outdoors men and women think that a conservation officer's job is mainly to write citations, but it actually includes much more than that, including getting the next generation interested in the outdoors. The Youth Hunt in Kentucky is a weekend opportunity for youth under the age of 16 to use a firearm to harvest a deer prior to any other modern firearm season that we have. When I became an officer, I realized that the department had resources and the ability to, to host youth events, and I decided to, to put on a, a youth hunt of my own. Being a parent of a child with a disability, I thought that I would gear the event more towards that. We call it the Little Heroes Handicap Youth Hunt. Officer Ben Fisher, he's been putting it on for about five years now. So we'll get handicapped youth, special needs children out in the community. Kids that think that they can't hunt or may not have an opportunity to hunt, um, we take them out and show what it is possible for them to hunt. It's an incredible event. We give them a whole lot of tools that assist in them harvesting deer and it's just something they really enjoy. It's something that's really rewarding for us officers to be here helping with these kids. All right, so this is a cell phone mounted scope attachment. And when we attach it to the firearm and the scope, it allows the officer that's sitting beside the youth to see the crosshairs in real time through a cell phone. So that helps us be able to adjust their aim. With this equipment, we're actually capable of taking a child that's totally blind. Um, so we use a lot of special equipment for this event. Some of that special equipment that we have that we use can be items like a breath mechanism. We've got an empty rifle. Take the safety off when you're ready to shoot. Now you've got a secondary safety here. If he sucks on this straw, nothing will happen. When he's ready, you're going to flip this switch, and when he sucks on the straw, the gun goes boom. We do a debriefing, a safety debriefing. Three of these children have never shot a firearm before. And I think I talked to a lot of you guys about it last year, but as we're coaching these children through shooting a firearm, it's really important to talk to the youth as they're firing. Okay, now just a gentle squeeze, easy. You know, you're just constantly talking to them. That's gonna keep them calm. It's gonna help them be able to make that good shot. The youth is never to have the firearm when he's not in the presence of you guys, okay? So you guys are in control of the firearm at all times. Safety's the number one thing while we're here. You guys good with that? Any questions? I know a couple of you have never been here before. You guys got any questions before we get started? Hey, kids are gonna start rolling in. The kids will show up. We'll kind of have like a little meet and greet with the officer that's gonna hunt with them. We'll hang out with them and talk and kind of joke around with them a little bit. It's good to see you, Jaden. We're glad you guys could come out. You excited? Yeah. Good, good. Well, we're looking forward to it. You know, we're really excited about it. This year, I was gonna hunt with Jaden. Jaden and I have a lot of history. Jaden's been hunting with us for about three years now. He started shortly after a tragic incident put him in a disability. Jaden was in a car accident in 2018, and at that time, his mother passed away, and he went through a windshield, which caused him to be a paraplegic. The doctors told Jaden he'd never walk again. He'd always be in a wheelchair. But as you can see, Jaden now is on forearm crutches. Can't walk without them, but he can operate on the forearm crutches. 
before the accident, Jaden was on his way, him and his mother, to his last basketball game. He was a great basketball player. They actually would sit him on the bench because he would score so many points that he'd have to give the other team an opportunity to score. He loved to ride four-wheelers. He just loved to do all of it. He loved the outdoors. Once all the youth arrive on scene, we eat lunch and we hand out goodie bags of items donated to this event from members of the community. And then we go over a safety briefing. All right guys, so listen, we're gonna to talk to you guys for a little bit about this firearm, okay? We show them what their firearm's gonna look like that they're using. We make sure all the youth understand where the safety is and how to operate the safety and keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction at all times. We go over ethical shooting. What you guys are gonna see when you look down these scopes is you're gonna see a cross. You're wanting to put the center of that cross right behind the front shoulder of the deer. The next thing we do is we all hop in our vehicles and we head to the local range to check zero and safety on the firearms. While at the range, all of our officers assist the youth in taking the shot, make sure they feel safe and comfortable. This is my second year doing this. I came last year and it was just so rewarding to see the smiles on these kids' faces, um, experiencing something they've never done. My kid this year, he just shot a gun for the first time in his life, and the smile on his face and the happiness that you get from them, it's unlike anything else I do in this job. Most people think that we just go out and write tickets and that kind of thing, but we do a whole lot more in communities given the chance and opportunity to do them. Um, this is just one of the, the really good events that we do. This is a good way to show them, hey, you know, yeah, we're game wardens, but we're people in the community as well. We like to have a different stigma. It's perfect. We're gonna move it down a couple clicks, call it good. Every year we have some little issues that we have to work out. You know, youth that are scared of loud noises or the recoil of the firearms. Okay, take your time, there's no rush. Okay, you're doing great. All of our officers are very good at thinking on their feet and able to address those issues. Oh, <laughs> Jade, you going in and get in that chair, buddy. You and I are gonna shoot next. Go on ahead and load your rifle. There you go, push your bolt forward. And down till it clicks. There you go. All right. Take your safety off. All right. A gentle press. We don't jerk it. We just gently press the trigger. Good job. Good job. Once we've concluded our range, we head back to the event location. We take group photos prior to heading out to the field. We allow the youth to fill their goodie bags with snacks and drinks. And then we head out to our blind locations to start our evening hunt. What I like about deer hunting is being outdoors and outside. It's just peaceful and fun, making memories, especially when deer come out. Jaden and I headed out to the blind for our first evening hunt. Once in the ground blind, we got all of our equipment lined out, made sure we were very comfortable where the tripod was sitting, made sure Jaden had a good field of view. All right, Jaden. We're sitting on a about a 12 acre bean field. We've been seeing a lot of deer in this area. We gotta keep our eyes open because it is possible that deer could come out from our right. Are you excited? Yes. I think this event means a lot to the youth that we take. I think that they enjoy being outside and they enjoy getting to see different things and experience different things. They really enjoy sitting with that officer, asking the officer questions and asking them to tell them stories and things like that. I think it means a lot to them, and it means a lot to us that we're able to take them out. Youth hunts and mentoring these kids, it just gives you a sense of pride that you don't really get any other time, really. You're teaching them, you're creating that everlasting memory with them, and it kind of paves the way to whether they're going to continue to hunt for the rest of their life or not. It's a really good thing to take children hunting or fishing, just getting them out there and teaching them, making those memories with them. While we're out there hunting, we allow the guardian or a parent to sit out there with us. And oftentimes, the parent or guardian is just as excited as the kid. And uh, a lot of the times, I think the officers are a little bit more excited than both of them. That shot was leaky, the officer leaky. Buddy, you put a great shot on her. I freaking am. I know. So close to dark, we were all looking around in the corners and stuff, and we weren't really paying attention in front of us. And we just look up, and there's a doe there. 
So Ben tells me to get on my gun. Get on your gun. It's in the beans right there in front of you. Do you see it? It's looking right at us. It's real small. I think Jaden made a very good ethical decision. He decided to pass on that shot. The doe was very small. It was a little bit far and it was low light. So Jade decided to pass in hopes that something else may step out or something bigger. Once we got back, we got to talking to some of the other hunters and some of the other officers. I think it was a very slow evening for most people involved, but we did have one youth harvest a deer. It was his very first deer and he was very excited to have taken that deer. The Youth Weekend in Kentucky is a two-day event. Jaden and I met up the second day and headed to the blind. We sat in a new location from what we had sat the day before. Jaden was very excited to hunt in a new spot and get to see some new property, some new territory, and was really looking forward to harvesting a deer this second day. We did have three does come out that were a little bit too far for him to shoot. They came out about 250 yards to our left. Jaden was very excited to see them and happy to get to see some deer movement, but we weren't able to make it happen our second day. We talked to Jaden at the end of the hunt thanked him for coming, really enjoyed getting to spend this weekend with him. We made sure that we talked about, you know, that's why they call it hunting and not killing, you know, it's not a guaranteed thing. And I think Jaden had a great attitude about the whole thing. It was really nice to be able to get out here, just to be able to do stuff that I wouldn't be able to do without officers. And it's really nice in the do. This is something that Jaden will remember for the rest of his life. These officers and the volunteers are amazing and we look forward to every year them calling us or being coming to the house and asking Jaden to be a part of it. When we got back, we saw that two of our youth were successful that second evening. Yeah, is that your first deer? Yeah. That's outstanding, Bentley. I'm real happy for you, buddy. Bentley harvested his first deer. It was a small buck. Uh, he's very excited about it. This is the exact bullet. That yeah, time. look at that. And then we also had one of our youth, Nathan, had harvested a big doe. This was Nathan's second year with us. The first day he thought he'd sit and wait for that buck, but that second day that big doe came out and he decided that was the one he wanted to take home. I'm glad you had a lot of fun. You want to say anything to the camera before we turn it off? Hunting is fun. Hunting is fun? <laughs> That's awesome. I think so too. After congratulating the two youth on harvesting their deer that evening, we learned that a third one of our youth, Logan, had actually harvested three deer that evening. So we drove down to see if we couldn't lend a hand. Logan, how'd you do, buddy? Right at sunset, we had a couple does come out, and one come out about 50 yards, and Logan put the smack down on it. A couple more does, they kind of stuck around. I asked him if he wanted to take another one. And he got real excited, and we shot another one, and he made a good shot in it as well. And then as we were sitting there talking, and we looked over, and at the edge of the woods was a little spike buck, and uh, I said, hey, Logan, that one's, that one's got some antlers on it, man. You want to take it? And he just got super thrilled. And uh, to be able to be with Logan to take his first deer yesterday and his first buck tonight is an amazing experience. I think that this event is a very good thing for these youth to be a part of. I think that they get a lot out of it. I think it's very therapeutic for them. We're going to continue to do this year after year. We'll have it every youth weekend. And we really look forward to seeing our new youth next year. When you're out on an archery deer hunt, sometimes things don't work out exactly as planned and you have to just take what you can get. Well, this is my second night in a row here in this stand, watching this bean field. I've also hunted it one other time earlier this week, and every time I've been in the stand, I'm seeing a ton of deer, and I'm seeing bucks chasing does each and every time. Last night, I had a pretty cool encounter with two bucks that came out of this little patch of wood right here, walked right up here. One of them is an eight-pointer that's got incredibly long brown tines. You could tell that big buck had chased the smaller one out, and then a doe came through, and he was completely interested in her. We, did, we didn't see that deer again until right at dark. We saw it again walking back through. If we see that buck, we're gonna try to grunt it in. May do some rattling too, but I feel really, really good about this location. We're gonna hopefully see some deer. It's a perfect wind for it, and fingers crossed. Hey, it's the pre-rut deer are chasing. What a beautiful time to be in a deer stand.
bucks and they just do not want to cooperate. We have a mature doe walking toward us right now. If she gets within range, I'm going to take a shot. She's a mature doe. Definitely completely blood soaked, tip to end. Hopefully this was a really, really good shot here. Oh yeah, now, now here's, a, uh, we're starting to see a lot more. Starting to see a whole lot more. Oh, right here. Oh, here we go. Man, what a big doe oh man i was hoping i put a really good shot on it and it's dark you can't tell but literally 20 yards right there is is the soybeans this year ran a total of about 100 yards i was really out here looking for a buck but when this big doe got that close that late in the hunt and i'd already tried all my tricks <laughs> to try to get those bucks in closer and they just weren't mature bucks this gave me too good of an opportunity to go ahead and to take this doe and I couldn't be more excited. Now the work starts. I gotta drag her out of here, get her deboned, and the processing begins. Most Kentucky deer hunters take one deer and they consider that a good season. But this year, if you get a chance, consider taking a second deer and donating it to Hunters for the Hungry. 
we set up this morning on this on this field, knowing that there were a lot of deer in here. What we couldn't tell is this this field. It's got a little bit of a ridge line in the dead middle. It caused us some issues because as we sat down here, we really couldn't tell how many deer were moving across from us. We sat here until about nine o'clock. Finally decided to stand up and look. Literally saw a deer coming through, could only see its head. And as it walked up on this backstop across from us, we were able to get a shot. There were two of them. The second one ran back and stopped. I'm excited. I'm going to donate these deer to Hunters for the Hungry. You know, the holidays are right around the corner. And these stay right here in our local community, so we don't want anyone to go hungry throughout Thanksgiving and Christmas. So we're going to get these donated. Let's go check out what we got. Looks like we've got a medium sized doe here. This is a, gonna be a perfect size, really good eating for hopefully several needy families right here in the uh, Kentucky Louisville communities. I'm really excited about giving this deer to Hunters for the Hungry. I made a donation each of the last couple years and this is gonna be absolutely perfect for what I was wanting today. bit about how the process with Hunters for the Hungry works. Okay, so a hunter takes illegally, harvest a deer, they get the confirmation number, of course, bring it into a, a processor. We always recommend that they call a processor first to make sure that one, if it's early season, that they're taking deer mm -hmm. at this time. And then two, that they haven't met their quota yet. Mm -hmm. We give each processor a quota for the year mm -hmm. and uh, they work up to that number. So call before you take your deer. How big is this program? Last year we did a uh, 1,468 deer, which uh, a, deer, a deer will give us about 40 pounds of ground venison. Mm -hmm. And from that 40 pounds of ground venison, uh, it'll feed uh, about 200 meals. So that's over 300,000 meals right so there. If we start doing the, the quickly doing the math here, you're talking about two, 2,000 deer and you're looking at 200 meals. We're talking 400,000 meals. Right, that's my goal for this year. Yes. In the state of Kentucky, the, state of Kentucky. the hunters are going to provide through donations of, of, their, of, their, of their harvest. Right. It's a win-win for everybody. It's a win for the farmers because if they've got depredation permits, mm -hmm. we can take them. Mm -hmm. uh, zone 1 counties are you know, they're wanting to get the deer off of there, Zone 2 as well. Mm -hmm. So if we can get these extra deer that's, you know, that's causing damage, why not put them to good use? If you're a hunter and you go, you know what, I, I want to help out this program, there's a couple ways you can do it. First off, you can make a financial contribution, right? Right, right off our website. Right off the website, and that will help pay a processor to process another deer. Right. Two, you can take a legally harvested deer and reach out to a processor and drop it off. Right. And is there any other ways they can help out? Yes, well, they can actually pay for the processing if they want to. Okay. But typically, uh, that's what our organization does is pay for the processing. Okay. So. And you guys partner with the Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, as well as some other organizations to help raise funds for this, right? Right. Department of Fish and Wildlife, of course, uh, Kentucky Farm Bureau, Feeding Kentucky. We have a lot of partners, a lot of sportsman's clubs, uh, a lot of individuals that help. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic program. I appreciate all your oh, thank help you. and, and for coming in and explaining the program to us. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have a stringer full of fish caught by Ethan Mitchell and his dad and uncle. They were caught at a family farm pond in Ohio County. Nice job. Here we have father and son Derek and Bo Klosterman with a beautiful bobcat that was taken in Oldham County, Kentucky. Nice job. Here we have George Crone of Floyd's Knobs, Indiana who caught this trophy rainbow trout while fishing in Cumberland River. Nice fish. We love these pictures. Here we have Riley's two years old with their very first fish ever she caught while fishing with her papa. Check out this largemouth bass caught by Austin Price. He caught this fish in Lewis County at a family farm pond. 
Here we have a great largemouth bass caught by six-year-old Ben Johnson. This fish was caught at a Georgetown neighborhood lake. Nice fish. I hope all you Kentucky deer hunters have a safe and successful deer season. But don't forget, there are many opportunities to get outdoors in this great state of Kentucky. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.